Welcome to Healthcare Conversations with Central Florida's leading expert, Larry Jones, Executive Director of Integrated Independent Physician Networks and the CEO of the Independent Healthcare Partners. Integrated Independent Physician Network Dynamics. During this first podcast in the series, we're going to spend a few minutes discussing the large independent physician networks and how they compete. Larry Jones is the Executive Director of Integrated Independent Physicians Network, IPN, and the CEO of Independent Healthcare Partners. He's an independent physician advocate and has worked with independent doctors for over 25 years. Larry has experience on both the payer and the provider side of healthcare, has written numerous articles, and is involved in both the state and federal healthcare legislation. Larry is also the founding board member of the Florida Association of ACOs and spent 12 years on the business advisory board of Seminole County Schools working on their health care program. April Peterson is the director of network development and has been in various fields of health care for over 20 years. She's worked closely with independent physicians for over 19 years and continues to be an independent physician advocate. April understands the private practice of medicine and the challenges that our physicians face today. Collectively, Larry and April have over 45 years of healthcare experience and will discuss the opportunities, challenges, and the vision for independent physicians and the IPA model for the future. So Larry, let's get started. What is the Integrated Independent Physician Network, or <clears throat> IPN? Yeah, IPN is a uh, independent physician network of almost a thousand physicians in nine counties in the Central Florida area. We represent about 300 primary care doctors and the balance all multi-specialty and we have every multi-specialty uh, included in that in different geographic areas. But uh, I think the real purpose of IPN is to provide the independent physician the tools and the the opportunities to succeed and compete with the hospital. You know, the, the independent solo family physician is in tremendous jeopardy in regards to the way the insurance companies treat them in the way of fair reimbursement uh, at lower rates and not even competing in opportunities as such as narrow networks that we'll talk about as we, as we move forward. But what IPN has tried to do is evolve into a pure clinically integrated network to where we have all the tools and all the programs that the large hospital systems provide to their employed physicians in an independent arena. Nice. So why should Central Florida physicians be members? Currently, 44% of physicians in America are owned by the hospitals, yet 70% of physicians leaving residency, coming out of med school, or joining the hospital systems. And what this basically does is drives up the cost of health care for everyone. Anything that is aligned with a hospital drives what they call a facility fee, which can drive your cost up four to five times more. What IPN has done, we have developed a complete independent health care delivery system to where the 1.4 million patients that we represent in all of our practices, the only time these patients, if they were truly educated properly and directed properly, the only time they would ever go to anything with a facility fee, meaning owned by the hospital, is if they truly end up in the ER or get admitted, saving millions and millions of dollars in health care. Wow. So let me ask you this. What is a clinically integrated network, or a CIN? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you know, CIN, the term clinically integrated network, is, is a fairly new concept in, uh, in health care. But basically what it means is that an organization, now it could be a hospital, it could be a combination of hospital independent, but in our regard, it's strictly independent physicians, have moved into an, an environment to where all the physicians understand and have the same mission. And our mission is to preserve and protect the independent practice of medicine and offer a more cost-effective, higher quality patient satisfaction healthcare 
uh, environment for the, the citizens of Central Florida. But to be a true clinically integrated network, <clears throat> you have to do two things. You have to do clinical integration, you have to do care management for your physicians, for their patients, and you also have to have some type of risk. And we are in multiple Medicare risk contracts, and we also do shared savings with the large self uh, large uh, payers like Blue Cross Cigna and the United. And we have already proved that our performance, both on cost and quality, is significantly lower than what the hospitals can deliver. Wow. So, and, and the other thing that being a CIN actually gives us is there are two kinds of IPAs. There is a messenger model IPA, and then there is an IPA called a uh, single signature authority. And those are the two legal terms of IPAs. In a messenger model IPA, if you don't do clinical integration or take risk, you tr truly have to go out and survey every physician every time you propose a program with a hospital, I mean with a payer, and get their approval. In a clinically integrated network under a um, single signature authority, you don't have to do that. We are not only the messenger, but we are the contracting entity, and that's where IPN has evolved to today. Okay, I think you pretty much answered my next okay. question. Why, Good. you know, why are CINs so important? They're hugely yeah. valuable. So, but let me mention one thing: uh, value-based care, mm -hmm. which is meaning that pay for performance. It's projected by HHS, the Health and Human Services, that fifty percent of reimbursement will be based on value-based care in this country by 2020. Now that's 50% of almost a $4 trillion industry. So independent physicians cannot participate as a solo practice in value-based care if they don't have a structured entity like IPN or a hospital to actually participate in these programs. So solo physicians that are not part of IPN they're going to be left out in the cold, not only in value-based care, but also in the narrow networks that are popping up all over the, the area into where they're actually being shut out from having the ability to actually see their patients. And that's happened in, in Central Florida already. Okay. Yep. So now, can the IPN compete with Central Florida's large hospital systems? April, you want to address that? I think absolutely they can. Um, when you look at both of the large hospital systems in Central Florida, they do own or employ physicians within their, their walls, so to speak. But unfortunately, they don't have a complete network of physicians. One system owns or employs a very large number of primary care, but does not have a specialist network. The other has a little bit of both, but most are actually based out of the hospital setting where they don't have a private practice. So both systems do not have the ability to offer a complete healthcare delivery system. What ours is, is a complete independent healthcare delivery system. So a couple of years ago, we also developed an independent network of ancillaries called Independent Ancillary Healthcare Network. And so what that is, is all of the independent freestanding facilities like imaging, uh, laboratories, any of those entities that you could have services done at a hospital setting, but those come with facility fees attached to them, which are three, five, ten times more expensive. And not just to healthcare in general from the payer's perspective, like Cigna, Aetna United, or Blue Cross, but to the patient. So as a patient, if I get a mammogram at a freestanding facility, I am going to pay a very small amount, maybe a $10 copay, whereas if I go into a hospital setting, I'm going to usually have to pay a portion of my deductible at 20%. And because they're charging close to $1,500 for a service I could get at $75 at a freestanding facility, the out-of-pocket is significant. So really, it's um, our, our network is probably the most cohesive network in Central Florida. <clears throat> you know, it's estimated that uh, of that $3.6 trillion industry today, that 85% of the care delivered in America today could be delivered in a non-hospital setting, saving millions and millions of dollars. Only 15% of the care delivered in, in the hospital uh, today in America actually is an acute type care that truly needs the ER or hospital acute care uh, services. Mm 